Welcome in to Drew's Daily Diamond for Saturday, August 3rd, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. Let me know in the comments below what your MLB picks are for today, where you agree, where you disagree. All is welcome. Smash that like button if you're liking the content as we got some day action, prime time, West Coast late night action to get into, guys. So no waiting around. 105 Eastern, 10.05 a.m. Pacific. Toronto Blue Jays, New York Yankees from Yankee Stadium, New York, New York. Carlos Rodon, the lefty, going for the Bronx Bombers. Jose Barrios going for the Jays. We get eight and a hook as the total, minus 180. That's the Yankees as the heavy home favorite. 65 and 45 coming into the series, 20 games over 500. They were winners of five straight. They are down, as I'm recording this right now, to the Blue Jays in game one on Friday night. But guys, it's kind of the same theme we talked about last night. I mean, there is some huge trends in this one towards the total. First off, the Toronto Blue Jays came into the series 16-2 and two to the over their last 18 games. That's going back since, what, July 10th, 16-2 and two to the over. Hey, I think they actually just hit the over uh, in game one. So that's 17-2, and two, the last 19. And we get the Yankees, eight straight overs now, 11 of their last 12. So if you're betting this under, I'd say uh, watch out a little bit. Now, you could point to some, some reasons why they might not score as much. One being Barrios in his first start against the Yankees. He went seven innings, two hits, eight strikeouts. In his last time out, he went seven full, one earned against the Texas Rangers. So, I mean, I guess that's pointing towards him having a solid start. But I, you need to note that that wasn't the same Yankees lineup back at the end of June that it is right now. I mean, this is the hottest lineup in baseball since the All-Star break. Number one lineup overall, number one lineup against righties, Team OPS, and... Carlos Rodon, the lefty going for the Yankees, yeah, 4.3 ERA, but his last time facing the Blue Jays, he got smacked around for 10 hits and just five innings completed with eight earned runs. So they really got to him. I think they could get to him again here, and this Blue Jays lineup could put up a couple of crooked numbers themselves. There's, we're seeing it on Friday night. Both of these bullpens ranking bottom 10 um, over the last five weeks, shutting down their opponents. So guys, eight in the hook. I don't think it's heavy enough here with these trends. Let's go up and over Blue Jays and Yankees game one Saturday. Next one up an hour later, 220 Eastern. It's the St. Louis Cardinals, Chicago Cubs. Jamison Tyon going for the Cubbies. Kyle Gibson going for the Redbirds. Minus 120, that's the Cubs at home in Wrigley Field. No total out just yet. We had the day game on Friday, which the Cubs won 6-3. to three. They've now won three straight, scoring 24 runs in their last three games. And they have Tyon on the hill. His last time out, he had a rough start, six earned and four innings against the Reds. And he has faced the Cardinals twice already this season. Okay numbers overall from a blimps view, but he only had six strikeouts in 12 innings, so not missing a lot of bats. Don't love that facing the same lineup. And he's up against Kyle Gibson here, sub four ERA. He's had a pretty good season, back to back solid starts. He faced the Cubs twice as well, one good, one bad. The good one was in Wrigley Field, seven innings, just two hits, blanking him over the full seven here. Cardinals, what top 10 lineup against righties? Um, and the Cubs have struggled since the All Star break, bottom five lineup in baseball. I know they've been playing a little bit better baseball, but uh, I think it's a little wrong team favored here, guys. Let's jump on the Cardinals, listing Gibson as the starter, plus 106, risk 100 to win 106. On to the night slate up next, Queen City to be exact, Cincinnati, Ohio, San Francisco Giants against the Cincinnati Reds. Hunter Green on the hill for the big red machine, committing a minus 130 price tag. Kyle Harrison, the lefty. Going for the Giants. Total of nine in this one. We're going after the total again here, guys. First off, sidewise, the Giants winning five of their, their their last six coming into the series. Just two games under 500. But their starter, Harrison, man, this guy has been hot. Coming from the left side, he had 11 strikeouts his last time out in six and two-thirds innings, only giving up one hit. When guys strike out that much, giving up that only one hit, they're usually going to take money. The next time around but the thing is he's up against hunter green here hunter green has been hot as well back to back to back two hit starts so giving up just two hits in each of his last three only nine hits given up in his last 27 innings total so 
this guy's as hot as they come right now, the red starter. And Harrison, I left this part out, his last three starts, only two earned runs given up total, not two earned runs in each, two earned runs the last three, and back-to-back one-hit starts. So two of the hottest pitchers in baseball right now. Cincinnati Reds offense hasn't been good really all season long. Bottom five across baseball by weighted runs created plus. Bottom five out of the all-star break as well. So this total is nine right now. I know it's a hitter's ballpark, but I don't think we get there. I think it's three to two, four to one, something of that nature. Listing both starters, we're going under nine, Giants and Reds. On to the West Coast up next, 938 Eastern, 638 local time, Southern California. It's the LA Angels hosting the New York Mets. Jose Soriano, the starter for the Halos. David Peterson, the lefty, going for the Metropolitans. Mets, minus 125 road favorites, total of nine. Mets come in, what, six games over 500? They've been great on the road, five games over 500, whereas the Angels, what, they're 15 games under 500, and they're 10 games under 500 at home. So the Mets have been playing better baseball on the road, so have the Angels, but that's obviously favoring the Mets in this situation. Even more importantly, the Mets are playing great baseball overall. 15 and 7, their last 22. That's going back to what, July 6th. They've won 15 games. They got the 28 year old former first rounder out of Oregon and Peterson on the hill. The former Duck, 3 5 ERA. He's 5 and 1 on the season. And his home road splits, he's never let up more than two earned runs all season long on the road. So for whatever reason, outside of City Field, he's been pretty lights out. And I bring up home road splits with him because home road splits with Soriano are the exact opposite. The 25-year-old Dominican has a 2.8 ERA on the road, but at home over a 5 ERA. So that's not promising for him. The Angels just 2-5, and five, their last seven before the series. And their lineup's been pretty cold. Bottom 10 in baseball. Mets overall top five lineup by weighted runs created plus. I think minus a dollar and a quarter here on the Mets, listing Peterson as the starter. I think it's a little short, guys. So we're on the Mets over the Angels. Got one game left. Do want to uh, hit some questions here from this week in the uh, in the comments below. And reminder, fire away. It helps out the algorithm, guys. Anything is wel- welcome. Feel free to fire out any questions as well. Um, and smash that like button if you're liking the content. We got a question here from uh, SFC bites i believe he was saying it's about uh his name is about uh eating burgers and so many bites so love that man but um he has a question in terms of limit to pinch hitters pinch runners in a game after they pinch hit do they need to stay in the game any additional info thanks in advance well thanks to you sfc bites uh appreciate uh the, the question man and um a limit to pinch hitters pinch runners There isn't a limit in terms of how many you can put in the game, how many switches you can have. I will say this, though. There is kind of a roster limit of 26 roster players on on the team for any game. And so if you keep pinch hitting and pinch running, you're going to run out of players. You know, it's not like soccer where you can only have, you know, what is it, three or four substitutions in a game. But it's also not like basketball or American football in terms of, you know, guys can come in and out pretty much whenever, whenever they want. Um, Once they exit the game, they can't re-enter the game. So therefore with the 26 roster size rule, you're going to run out of players if you keep, if you keep substituting. So that would be the only limit, but no, to answer your question, there isn't necessarily like a one for one um, limit on how many times you can do it. Also, I bring up the roster situation um, for double headers. It goes up by one from 26 to 27. And that player, you know, gets one day of service time and then is returned to the minor league roster with, uh, the next day. He does get paid as an MLB player, by the way. But um, that's just for the double headers. And also on September 1st, they expand the roster to 28 players. So you might see a a couple more pinch hitters, pitch runners in the month of September. Love the question. Also a question, do you ever cash out bets with the sports books accounts? And if so, when do you do it? 
like this question as well. Um, first, I want to say, like, when you sign up for sports books, I'm a big proponent of take advantage of, you know, the 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 free the free action that they give you, you know, like deposit 100, get 100. Always do that kind of stuff, guys, because that's just free money. And you don't have to, like, pass the bar, be a lawyer to just read the little hits that you need to hit in terms of getting the money out. Like if you deposit a hundred, get a hundred, but you got to kind of bet a thousand, which it all adds up. So over the course of the season, you're, you're going to get to a thousand. Um, I always take advantage of those. And in terms of taking money out, like if you're hitting a bunch of bets and you get it up. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, in the, in the kind of global market, you know, the offshore sports books, I kind of have a rule of thumb, you know, I don't like to get into to like five figures. I just don't want to like have to take a, a plane down to Costa Rica or something, go knocking on doors in Central America. But um, that's just kind of my rule of thumb. Um, and, you know, with the higher ish interest rates right now, I, I, I'm not a big proponent of just leaving money sitting in a sports book account. But I guess that kind of depends on your own, um, you know, money handicapping, if you will. So, yeah, I, you know, I would take money out, you know, if you need it, something like that. But I'm also a proponent of, you know, sports book betting is is entertainment. So kind of have two separate accounts for that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah. Take money out when you can, for sure. Love the love the question there, FC bets. And uh, yeah, feel free to fire away any more guys. We got one game left on the Saturday card. It's the last game on the card. The Philadelphia Phillies. Seattle Mariners, 940 Eastern, 640 local time. We get Bryce Miller on the hill for the M's. We get uh, Kyle Allard, the lefty, going for the Phillies. Total of eight, minus 120. That is the Mariners as the home favorite. Phillies come in with 22 games over 500. They get the former first rounder Allard on the hill back in 2015. Really hasn't lived up to kind of the prospect level. Uh, bullpen starter type guy. He has one start this year. He went four innings, six hits, three earned against the Guardians. Something I noticed, he was only throwing 89 miles per hour. I'm not really looking to bet on him. However, the Phillies, a good year overall, not playing their best baseball, losing four straight coming into the series. They are up against Bryce Miller here, the 25-year-old fourth rounder out of Texas A&M. He's got some home road splits to the positive. He's got a road ERA, five and a half, and a home ERA, 1.88. 67 innings pitched in Safeco, only 14 runs given up. He only has a 238 on base percentage against. That's not a 238 batting average. That's that's even better than that. On base per percentage, just 238 against. I like this kid, particularly when pitching at home. I know the Mariners' offense hasn't been that great, but uh, I, I would list Miller here, guys. Late night action if you're needing something. Plus, that Mariners' bullpen has been really good. So we'll go Miller. As the listed starter, minus 120. That's the Mariners over the Phillies. In recap, we got the Mets, minus 125 over the Angels. We get the Giants and the Reds, under nine. We got the Cardinals with Gibson on the hill, plus 106. And the Toronto Blue Jays, New York Yankees. We're riding those over trends, guys, up and over eight and a half. If you're interested in premium picks, check them out, wagertalk.com. Experts page, Drew Martin, specials up and available. Comment below, guys. Smash that like button. Thanks for tuning in. Cash those tickets. Enjoy the week.